What is up, guys? It is Joe. I completely forgot how I do my intro, so if this sounds horrible, I apologize. But we're going to be talking about some post-game stuff about Kansas State's first basketball game. I know it was an exhibition match, so you take that caveat away immediately. K-State goes out and wins 102-68 to over Emporia State. Today's video, we're going to talk about some good things we saw from that, some bad things we saw from that, and just talk about post-game comments of what to expect going forward as the team gets set to take on USC live on TNT in Las Vegas on Monday night. I cannot wait to see what's next. Before I get into things about the actual specifics of the game, let me tell you this real quick because I don't do a great job of always saying it. If you like Kansas State athletics, I make videos each week talking K-State football, basketball, any other athletic thing going on, whether that be a high school commitment, whether that be an actual game recap, or whether that be injury stuff, coaching stuff, whatever it is, I make videos on every K-State piece of content that I think you guys might enjoy. So if you're a K-State person like me, if you care about K-State, go ahead and consider subscribing to this channel because we provide a ton of content about K-State athletics and we appreciate it. I don't know why I always say me. It's just me. So that's kind of a force of nature. It is just me. But if you're interested, go ahead and consider subscribing. It helps me out immensely and I appreciate it. But guys, let's talk about some specifics here. Now, I don't want this to sound like an I told you so because it's going to sound like an I told you so. And I'm not sitting here trying to parade this like a winner or anything like that because that's not what this is. But you saw a guy like Cam Carter be a dog. He's an absolute scorer. We'll talk about Cam later. In my eyes, the second most impressive player on the court was Jarrell Colbert. The guy has the ability to be an elite two-way player in the Big 12 Conference this season, and you saw it. I know it's Emporia State, so you take that out of the context. You say, well, these guys aren't Oklahoma State. They aren't Kansas. They aren't Houston. They aren't whatever you want to say. That does not matter. These are all talented athletes at the college level. Seeing this progression from last year to this year, obviously you didn't see Jarrell play much, but you saw what he could do just from his development, from where he's at mentally, some different things like that, the things you'd seen at high school up to this point. The kid goes out there and balls. And I want to give a shout out to Marco Bourne. Shout out Marco Bourne for doing all the work that he's done. And I don't want to just say it was only coaching and it was only Colbert. There's a lot of things that go into this, but it's impressive to see where the players already come at this point. And it's the same reason I asked uh, Coach Dowling about it here in this last video, because I selfishly am really excited to see his potential as a Wildcat. And he went out there and balled. If you hadn't seen that video, I'm going to play a little 45-second clip here of me and Coach Dowling talking about Jarrell Colbert. This is what Coach Dowling had to say, and I absolutely love the quote. A guy that I think is going to have a big rocket to the top is a guy like Jarrell Colbert. Jarrell has been working his tail off. Obviously, last year, didn't see the court a ton, red shirts. And then comes out, and he's continued to put work in the weight room and get to this point. He's standing there now looking like a double-double machine. Coach, can you talk about how much work he's done to get to the point where he's at right now? Well, first off, uh, 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 Coach Marco has been leading the charge on Jarrell Colbert. Um, we all work with him, but Coach Marco has really, like, you know, honed in on him because he had a guy like Craig Monroe, who was the number one player in the country that went to Georgetown, was the first-round draft pick. And uh, Jarrell reminds him a lot of him in a lot of ways. But he's maturing. He's gaining his confidence back. Let's not forget, Jarrell was a top 20 player coming out of high school, and mm -hmm. he came out of high school at the age of 17. He started college at the age of 17. So he's still young, and uh, he, he will play in that three-letter league one day. Now, flashing back a little bit further, I made a video talking about K-State's secret weapon back in May. So the season finishes up in March, and then you know we're kind of in that spot of like, what's happening next? I kind of caught into some vibes that I think Colbert Somewhere along the way, I thought Colbert is going to be a really, really special player for K-State if they continue to work with him. And you're already seeing that. That's already paying dividends. I made a video about it talking about K-State's secret weapon, and I basically highlighted Jarrell Colbert, even though I think at the time the vibe was more like Dorian Finister could be that guy or Taj Manning could be that guy or whoever you want to say. The guy that wasn't getting enough love was Jarrell Colbert. And I did not know how, because watching his tape in high school, watching it now, how he plays, like he's an elite player. Dude's a top 50 player coming out of high school and then goes to LSU. Coach Tang wanted him at Baylor. Didn't work out. Gets his second opportunity with him at K-State. It's really a cool story, actually, when you look into it. Dude is an absolute monster. So I, I just wanted to say, like, how cool it was to see that come to fruition. And even knowing, like, the kid's only a sophomore. I mean, he's going to continue to grow. And he's going to be such a good player. Didn't play last year, so you had a red shirt from last year. Guy's going to make some big plays this year. Especially in the absence of Naquan Tomlin. You know, the thing about this game, you didn't see Tomlin. Obviously, suspended from the program. Don't know if he's returning. Uh, but I think the general consensus is that he will. We'll see what happens here or there, but I think the coaching staff knows what they're doing. I will say this, having Colbert as an option like that, having David Gasson as an option, Will McNair looked like a big dog down low, and I appreciate that. Having guys that can play both bigs and the wing position in this new offense is going to be crucial, but I did want to shout out Jarrell Colbert because that dude, coast to coast, I mean, he can score, putbacks, rebound. The guy can block you into the third row of the stands. You saw that a couple of times. 
I just want to give a huge shout out to everybody involved in his development as well as him as a person. So huge, over the moon excited about Jarrell Culver and his future. Um, if you're interested, go ahead and watch those old videos. It's kind of funny looking back now to see it work out. Um, so that's kind of cool. Next thing you see, Arthur Kaluma is going to be a special, special player in this offense. Like, he's a special player no matter where you go. You could pick him up and insert him at any other program in the country. You know, drop him off at a at a Kansas, drop him off at an Iowa State, drop him off at a Texas, at a Houston, wherever you want to put him, he's still an absolute monster. So don't get that twisted. However, this offense of the five wide, five out offense, not five wide, you know, we're not dropping back and throwing four verticals on a football field, five out offense, that's going to give him so much more ability in the paint. Like if you think about, think, imagine this offense implemented last year with Keontae Johnson. When you have a guy that's just such a downhill explode pass, you get to the cup finished around you. I know the option of this offense was to make it so that people have better job finishing at the rim. They have an easier matchup inside. And Coach Tang mentioned the guards. You see a guy like Kaluma who can do that hybrid role of, okay, he's a small forward, power forward, uh, or, you know, he's a, he's a big guard, small forward. Obviously, you're 6'7", 6'8", and you're super athletically gifted. You could be whatever you want at that point. But he is going to be an absolute special player, an all-conference level player, and he's not the only one. You know, you know what you're going to get from Tyler Perry. He had a rough game in this one. Two of nine from three, I believe, or three of nine from three. The guy is a monster. And I think the best thing that I can say about this, about shooting, is that no matter what we say as fans, ah, this team, you know, struggled today. They, you, when they put up a three, if you're taking the right shots, they either fall or they don't. Today, they didn't fall. I'm not too worried. I mean, it wasn't like we're just jacking up threes for the sake of jacking them up. You had guys that are confident shooters. This is a good shooting team. I'm not worried about that persisting. Tyler Perry absolutely has the potential to be an all-conference player. But the guy I'm actually focusing on in this one is Cam Carter. Cam Carter, Coach Tang talked about it. How often do you hear a coach just say, I just need him to be a bucket. I need him to be a scorer. I need him to worry about scoring the basketball. Put the ball in the hoop. How often do you hear that from guys? You know, you usually hear it, well, I want him to be a well-rounded player. You know, you got to help out the team, sacrifice. We want him to be a scorer. We want him to put the ball in the net. That is incredible to see. That's the coaching staff you want to be a part of. And Cam Carter lived up to that. You know, 20 points, new career high, obviously it's exhibition, so it doesn't fully count or whatever you want to say, but him going out there and showing some of these crafty moves of the basket, him confidently shooting the three, I will say my only gripe is that when he posts his follow through, that shooting percentage skyrockets up. So if for some reason one of the coaching staff is seeing this somehow, let my boy know that that thing, if it's held up Danny Green style, that thing is going in the bottom of the net. So just tossing that out there, not to complain because the dude can shoot the lights out of the ball either way. Uh, but it's something I picked up on a little bit. Don't know if that's even true, so don't quote me on that, but it just feels like that. Next thing, should have mentioned it sooner. The basketball court looks incredible. You know, they finish it. You've got the big power cat at the center. The court looks nice. It's not that weird yellowy tone anymore. It looks clean. It looks like a place you want to defend your home court at. Like, this is a great job. And I know people are still bummed about not having lavender. It is what it is. I think it's a solid product, and I think it looks really great. I'm excited to see how it does this season and how people react to it. You know, you'll get more and more eyes on it, and especially on Bramwich Coliseum, especially with the fan aspect. You're going to see more and more people checking out the, the arena, the court. You'll see more things and more compliments headed its way. So I just wanted to give it love real quick before I move on to the next thing. All three of these freshmen can play this season. Absolutely can. I don't know what red shirting is going to look like, but you've got a guy like Data Ames, RJ Jones, and Buddy Rich, Michaela Rich. All three of these dudes can play. I mean, you see Day-Day Ames and R.J. Jones. R.J. Jones might be the best shooter on this team. That's crazy when you have a guy like Tyler Perry. Like, when R.J.'s putting that ball up, I feel like it's the bottom of the net every time. And that's coming from a true freshman kid. I know he's a stud. I know he's one of the top players in the, in the country last season. But what an absolute find, you know, out of the high school commitments. Coach Tang did a great job bringing in those recru- that recruiting class. And you see it paying dividends. You see Data Ames explode past defenders, playing like lockdown defense. That's the other thing is I saw him... And then you also see Dorian Finister, like those are your defensive stoppers. Those are your guys you see. And also Jarrell Colbert, I should have mentioned earlier, deserves some love for his defensive effort. That was a guy that was defending one through five and wasn't getting exposed anywhere in that lineup. Shout out to Jarrell Colbert. Buddy Rich, Michaela Rich. I never know if he wants to go with Michaela or Buddy, but I'm going to call him Buddy because it seems like that's what he goes by. Buddy Rich, dude can jump 38 feet and posterize anybody. It doesn't matter if LeBron's standing there. The dude is flying through the air. And if you watch some of his high school tape, I mean, he's an East St. Louis kid put the work in in high school. He was a physical presence the same way he is now, but obviously in high school, you had a little bit of smaller guys. You had some guys around you that can't jump as high, run as fast, whatever the case is. This dude is still a genetic freak, a genetic specimen. Freak's kind of a weird way to say that, but the dude can absolutely fly up and down the court, jump super tall, throw it on these dunks. How about that windmill dunk? How about the one-handed tomahawk where the guy can, I mean, you didn't even plant your feet at that point. You're just on the move, one-handed yam on your head. 
That kid's going to be exciting to watch play this season. And I don't know how it'll shake out with red shirts or whatever the case is, but all three of these people can be reliable starters that can give you good minutes. They're true freshmen, so there's going to be mistakes at some point in the year. I'm not going to try to, you know, break a board or whatever, or freak out or something like that if they have a mistake. But like, you're going to see a lot of big moments from these guys. And I think Kansas State's going to understand how much depth they have as the season goes on. Last thing I want to talk about, I guess maybe two things I can kind of blend into one real quick. A guy like Dorian Finister getting his red shirt from last year approved is huge. That dude also def- defense court to court. And you see some of his athleticism, like the same thing that caught my eye about Jarrell Colbert. It's the intangibles. It's long, fast, athletic dudes who can handle the basketball, not turn it over and be court to court, whether they're on defense or on offense, be a threat. That is the biggest thing. Coach Tang is stockpiling dudes that are really, really annoying to play against. That is the best way I describe it. You know, when you have a dude who's playing guard, you know, the two guard at six foot five, six foot six, he's longer than you, taller than you, faster than you, can jump higher than you. That sucks. That absolutely sucks. That is what Dorian Finister is. It's incredible to have a dude like that on the team. And I think he's going to be that defensive guy when you need, okay, their best player is going to go in. We need our best player on defense. Go for it. I need you to be out there, brother. That's the type of guy you want to have on the team. I think him getting his red shirt back, even though he played, I think it was five or six games he saw action last year. Him getting the red shirt is huge. And last thing I'll talk about here, I'm sure there's a bunch more things I could talk about. I'm not going to worry about it too much. But last thing here, I wouldn't look into the shooting woes too much. Don't overreact to this and say, well, <laughs> that's got to improve. We're not. I mean, yeah, it will. It will have to improve. But you started so you started to see some of the volume. You know, this team's going to be a three-point shooting team. It's going to be a five-out team. Does it mean you'll make all of them? No. You're going to go through stretches where it's like, ah, shoot, we are not putting the ball in the net. But where you're going to make your play is this transition. 100% is transition. Tyler Perry, obviously, much better three-point shooter than what you saw in this one. A guy like RJ Jones can be a super elite three-point shooter. Cam Carter looks like he's taking another step forward. There's a lot of dudes on this court that can score the basketball, whether it be off the dribble, catch and shoot, whatever you want to say. Transition and three-point shooting, like, you will see this team play 100 miles per hour faster than what you saw today. This was slow. Even in the second half when things are flying like this, it was a slow performance. Coach Tang talked about it. He's like, we got to be miles faster if we want this offense to work. And you saw flashes of it, but there are going to be a lot of, you know, miles per hour increases in the octane, high octane offense that we have now. 100%. And it will be an exciting basketball product to watch this season. But guys, I'm going to tell you this right now. I'll be in Vegas for the USC game. I don't know what the video schedule looked like. If I'll hit you with a video from the uh, from the hotel room, we'll just have to see how the event goes. I'm super stoked to be out there. It's going to be a lot of fun, but there's going to be a giant jump from going Emporia State to a top 25 team in USC with two of the top 20 incoming freshmen in the country. You're going to see a quick adjustment. So we're going to continue to ramp it up. This is a big weekend for K-State Athletics. I know people are kind of dreary about the fact that Trilly Donovan put the Duke gif out there for uh, for Pat Gong, but we'll see how it works out, man. Anything can happen in this high, in these high school recruiting stuff. I'm not going to jump in and say, well, we missed him or yes, you know, whatever, no. It's just going to be, we're either going to get him or not. So at this point, everybody has done everything they can. Don't overreact just right now. I would just wait it and see how the kid feels. Because it's one thing to have a GIF online. It's one thing to have this. You never know what's going to happen with college athletics. Something can change at the last moment. I'm not going to sit here and count my pennies whether it does or does happen. But the entire program, everybody rallied around a good kid that I think still has a shot to come to K-State. I wouldn't freak out yet. When you're seeing this, it'll be what? Thursday morning, I guess this will drop. It's Wednesday night as I'm recording this. So we may may know a little bit more. We'll see what happens there. But guys, I just want to say, regardless of what happens, this is going to be an exciting season of college basketball. It is. I know that it stinks a little bit not having Naquan Talman out there. And there was a bit of a weird feeling, but there's going to be so many highs and there's going to be some lows this season. There's going to be so many highs that we feel great about and come together as a team. Like, did anybody feel that great when we're heading into the first season, when you go to the Elite Eight with two scholarship players in your roster? I'm not sitting here predicting that we're going to win a national championship every year, but legitimately this staff gives you a chance. And that's all you can ask for as a fan is that you have a legitimate chance. You haven't had that in the last two decades, realistically, as a fan base. So I'm excited to see everything that happens. No matter what happens against USC, that's a good starting point. You're on TNT, will be nationally televised. I would bet $100,000 if I had that much money. I don't even have one hundredth of that. I don't know how, I don't do math. I would bet so much money we'll be in Lavender. And I will be in Lavender in Vegas. If you see me, come say what's up. You know, we'll get a drink or do something like that. So I hope you guys all have a wonderful rest of your day. Hope you enjoyed the cats. And we'll talk to you here soon. With either, I think it'll be probably the Texas video first, I would imagine. So be ready for that one as we talk about Kansas State football. But guys, I appreciate you watching. Have a wonderful rest of your day. And go cats.